Chapter 1. Introduction and Basics. In this section of the Radiant Introductory Training Series, we will be discussing some of the basics for using Lattice Radiant. Chapter 1 consists of three sections. In the first section of the chapter, called Installation and Licensing, the general process for downloading Radiant and requesting a license are covered. In section 2 of the chapter, Lattice Radiant Environment, we will introduce Radiant's workspace environment and what it can be used for. Finally, in the third section of the chapter, Project Strategies and Implementations, we will review the basics for Radiant's project strategies and project implementations. Chapter 1, Section 3 Project Strategies and Implementations. In this section of the video series, we will be discussing the basics for creating and managing project strategies and implementations in Radiant. The first thing that we will be discussing are Radiant's project strategies. The strategies available for use in a project will appear in the Strategies folder of the File List tab. There are three predefined strategies that each Radiant project will begin with. The first strategy, called Area, optimizes a design to minimize area. The second strategy, called Timing, attempts to optimize the performance of a design. The third strategy, called Strategy 1, is the default strategy for new projects and attempts to optimize a design for general purpose. There can only be one strategy that is active in a project at a time. The strategy that is currently active will have its name bolded in the list of strategies. To change the active strategy for a project, right-click the name of the new strategy and select Set as Active Strategy. The new strategy should have its name in bold, indicating that it is active. Aside from switching the active strategy, any of the existing strategies can also be modified. Additionally, new strategies can also be cloned from existing ones or created from scratch. To begin modifying an existing strategy, double-click the name of the strategy you want to edit from the list of strategies. This will open the strategy settings window for that strategy. This window contains all of the settings that can be modified for the selected strategy. To filter out some of the less commonly modified strategy settings, click the drop-down at the top of the window and select Frequent. Doing this will make it so only the most frequently modified strategy settings are visible. All of the other strategy settings that are no longer visible will retain their default values from before. On the left side of the strategy settings window is the process browser. This area contains all the different strategy-related settings for different parts of the process design flow. Select an item from this area to open the settings for that section in the right side of this window. If changes were made to any of the settings in a strategy, click OK in the bottom right of the window to confirm those changes. As mentioned before, users can also create new strategies from scratch. To begin creating a new strategy, right-click the Strategies folder in the File List tab. From the drop-down that appears, select Add, and then select New Strategy. This will open the New Strategy Creation window. In the New Strategy window, define the name for the new strategy, and where the new strategy should be saved. Once a name and location have been defined for the new, the new strategy, click the OK button in the bottom right to finish creating it. The new strategy will appear in the same area of the File List tab as all the other existing strategies in a project. Any newly created strategies will have the same settings as the predefined strategy called Strategy 1. The process for modifying a new strategy is the same as for any other strategies in a project. To begin doing so, double-click the name of the new strategy from the list of strategies in the File List tab, as was demonstrated in the previous slide. Another way to create a new strategy is to clone an existing one. To begin cloning a strategy, right-click the strategy you want to clone and select Clone Strategy. Doing this will open the Strategy Cloning window. In the Strategy Cloning window, define the name and ID for the new strategy. The name and ID of the clone strategy cannot be the same as any existing strategies. Once a name and ID have been defined, Click the OK button to generate the new clone strategy. The new clone strategy will have the same strategy settings as its source strategy. The only difference between the two strategies will be their names and IDs.
The next section in the file list tab are the project implementations and project files. Project implementations are used to control which files are active and what processes they are used for. Additionally, implementations can also be used to try different synthesis engines and change other synthesis related settings. As can be seen from the figure on the right side of the screen, project implementations come with several predefined folders. As files are added to a Radiant project's implementation, they will be automatically organized to these folders. As mentioned before, a project's implementation contains several folders used to organize the files in a project. The first folder, called Input Files, contains all of the Verilog, System Verilog, and VHDL files in a project. The Pre-Synthesis Constraint Files folder contains all the pre-synthesis timing constraint files for a Radiant project. These are the constraint files that are used by LSE and Simplify Pro during synthesis, to add additional timing constraints for a design. The Post-Synthesis Constraint Files folder will have the constraint file used for map and par. This file will consist of the timing and physical constraints for the synthesized design. The Debug Files folder contains the project files used for reveal debugging sessions. The Script Files folder contains all of the simulation wizard project file scripts. The Analysis Files folder contains the Power Calculator project files used for analyzing a project's power consumption. Finally, the Programming Files folder contains the chain configuration files that are used for device programming. Similar to strategies, there can be multiple implementations for a project, but only one that is active. The files and settings are unique for each implementation, so it is important users understand how to manage them. The implementation that is currently active will have its name in bold. Additionally, only the files in the current active implementation will be visible in the file list tab. To switch the active implementation for a project, right-click the name of the implementation you want to switch to. From the drop-down that appears, select Set as Active Implementation. The new implementation should now have its name in bold, indicating that it is active. The settings for an implementation can also be modified. To begin modifying the settings for an implementation, right-click the na name of the implementation you want to edit. From the drop-down that appears, select Properties. This will open the Project Properties window. The Project Properties window can be used to do a variety of things, like view information about the contents of a project, or modify the settings for an implementation. The Project Properties window can be seen in the figure on the right. In the left side of the Project Properties window are the contents of the current project. This area contains all of the settings, strategies, and implementations for a project. When something is selected from the project contents area, information about that item will appear in the right side of the window at the top. To modify the settings for an implementation, select the implementation you want to modify from the project contents area. The settings for the selected implementation will appear in the right side of the window. If the project properties window is opened by right-clicking an implementation, then that implementation will automatically be active when the window opens. The settings in this area can be modified using any of the value fields next to a setting. Some notable settings that can be modified here are the Active Synthesis tool and Verilog standard. To confirm any changes that were made to an implementation, click the OK button. As mentioned before, there can be multiple implementations in a project. One of the ways an implementation can be added to a project is to create one from scratch. To begin creating a new implementation, right-click the name of the project at the top of the File List tab. From the drop-down that appears, select Add, and then New Implementation. This will open the New Implementation Creation window. The first thing that should be done in the New Implementation Creation window, is to define a name and directory for the new implementation. The name of the implementation is how it will appear in the File List tab, and the directory is what its generated folder will be called. As these two fields are updated, a preview of the new implementation's directory can be seen in the location field. Next, a synthesis tool should be selected for the implementation using the synthesis tool drop-down field. 
After that, users should select a strategy for their implementation using the default strategy drop-down field. All strategies in the current project will be available for selection here. The fourth step in the implementation creation process is to add source files. This step is optional, however, it should be noted that if no source files are added, the new implementation will only contain empty folders. To add source files for an implementation, select the Add Source button. Here users will have two options for adding source files. The source files from an existing implementation in the same project can be copied to the new implementation using the From Existing Implementation option. The other other option for adding source files is to click the Browser option. This will open the File Explorer window, allowing users to manually select which source files to add. One important thing to remember when adding source files, is to select the Copy Source to Implementation Directory checkbox. Checking this option will copy all source files to the directory of the new implementation. If this option is not checked, the implementation's directory will not contain any source files, and will instead reference them from their source. The final step in the new strategy creation process, is to click the OK button in the bottom right of the window. Doing this will generate the new implementation. Another way an implementation can be added to a project, is to clone an existing implementation. A cloned implementation will have the same settings as its source, like its strategy, synthesis engine, and files. The only difference between a cloned implementation and its source implementation, are their names. To begin cloning an implementation, right-click the name of the source implementation you want to clone. From the drop-down that appears, select Clone Implementation. This will open the implementation cloning window. The window for cloning an implementation is similar to the one for creating one from scratch. The first step for cloning an implementation, is to define its name and directory. The name of the implementation is how it will appear in the file list tab, and the directory is what its generated folder will be called. The next step is to select how the source files of the cloned implementation should be handled. Selecting the Continue to use the existing references option, will reference the files from the directory of the source implementation. Selecting the Copy Files to New Implementation Source Directory option, will create copies of any source files in the cloned implementations directory. There are no other configurable options in this window, as the synthesis tool, strategy, and source file files of the cloned implementation will match its source. When finished configuring the settings in this window, click the OK button in the bottom right to generate the cloned implementation. That concludes the first chapter of the introductory training series.